the creation of a talking animal, an animal that has life, personality, and feathers. 3,700 of them, to be exact, it is something that not many of us would undertake, but Peter's guest today has and would and did it successfully. Peter. One of Kermit Love's creations just came out with his own movie, but Big Bird has been a star in his own right for years, ever since our guest today gave him life. And Big Bird is not the only one, of course, who owes his existence to Kermit Love. This, this is the Snuggle Bear, right? Uh, some of you, uh, oh, and I recognize this fellow, too. Oscar. Uh, he's a grouch, one of those characters that people love to hate. Well, Kermit, first of all, how did you ever get into this business? <laughs> Well, I'm beginning to wonder how I'll get out of it. <laughs> it's been going on for so long. I started in the 20s, actually, and then I had a good many years in which I simply designed in the theater. In those years, wherever it was possible and interesting, I used puppets or the concept of puppets in theater. And then in 1962, I decided I'd had it and I was ready to pack it in, and I met Jim Henson, and he got me back. Got the me rest back is into puppets. The rest is history. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary by doing a big special. We taped it last week in Toronto. And all the old puppets got together again. Uh -huh. You have a new puppet also. Ah, oh, yes. My Snuggle latest bear is Snuggle. Is... Right. Snuggle. Snuggle's a teddy bear that I created for Lever Brothers. And he's a spokes bear for a product called Snuggle. And he was the... In many ways, I suppose, the greatest challenge of all, because all my life I wanted to create a teddy bear. And that's a bit of a challenge, you know. I mean, everybody through history almost has had teddy bears, and suddenly to say, I'm going to make a different teddy bear. You wouldn't think it would be possible. At least somebody from, from my point of view would say, well, a teddy bear is a teddy bear, right? That's what I thought, but I found out differently. The perception for a teddy bear is always highly individual. Uh, it is the look, the touch that you, the individual, endows the teddy bear with that gives it that unique, special thing. Now, I've been told that this teddy bear looks a little like me. I don't, of course, see the resemblance, but there are those who do. I think all I gave him was a little love and affection, and uh, I've told him a few secrets. And, of course, people don't care when, when teddy bears begin to come apart, even. I remember having a teddy bear when I was two years old that looked a lot worse than it did when it started. And, you know, legs start to fall off and things, and uh, the teddy bears are still an object of affection. No matter I don't think a teddy bear them. would be a true teddy bear if it hadn't had an ear that had been chewed upon. <laughs> uh, actually, I like to think that teddy bears for years and generations have been told so many secrets that uh, we don't dare uh, set them apart. We have to keep them safe as we do our secrets. Do you have any more, uh, any more new characters to come up with this year? Uh, well, my, of course, other big character, Mr. Snuffleupagus, is going to be seen this year by society in general. Uh, even you may be able to see him. Uh, and uh, uh, one always hopes that somewhere down the line there'll be something new. Okay. I'm anticipating it anyway. All right. Well, Kermit Love, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, Peter. All right.